Hey guys, do y'all know how to build one of these? Do you? Stick with me the next few minutes and I'm gonna show you everything that's in my IFAC that I just got done building for a special thing that we're gonna do. But guys, how to build your IFAC. Do you know how to do it? Stick with me. Hey guys, it's Jason with Kentucky Sustainable Living. Today, I've got an IFAC. This is mine that I just got done building. We're gonna show you everything that's in it, uh, all the contents, tell you what they're for, and go through this. You can build your own IFAC. It's not that hard. Take the mystery out of it. Stick around, and I'm gonna show you. All right, guys, I got the shot set up now where you can see a little bit closer. This is an IFAC that I just got done building. Uh, this is a nice one. This one's from uh, Special Operations Equipment. I've had it purchased for a while, but we'll kind of go over it. This is a tear-off IFAC. It's got hook and loop on the back, uh, molly to where you can molly it on, and then you can rip it away from whatever it's attached to. But guys, a lot of people, there's kind of some mystery. What do you need to put in your IFAC? Stuff like that. We're going to go over everything that's in here. And this IFAC, it is made for injuries that will kill you in five minutes or less. There's no band-aids, there's no boo-boo stuff, anything like that. This is for traumatic injuries that can end your life in five minutes or less. So we'll start off on the front. You got clips in the front pocket, two Cat 7, uh, or Cat Gen 7 tourniquets, staged and ready to go. If they're not staged and they're still in the plastic, uh, it's stupid, honestly. Uh, you need to take your Take your uh, tourniquets out, take them out of the package, stage them to where you can put them on one-handed. That's a very important thing. I see a lot of people that have their tourniquets are still in a pretty little cellophane wrapper. That's time that it's gonna take you to get out of it. And also that tells me that you've not trained on your tourniquet or your gear. So we'll lay this down. Got two zippers, clamshells open. Stuff we've got in here. We'll start over here on this side. I've got to think a quick cut combat gauze. These have the hemostatic agent in them to stop the bleeding. We've got, uh, these are chest seals from Rhino Rescue. Uh, got two because typically, typically if you have a penetrating injury into your uh, pleural cavity in your chest, there's gonna be an entry and an exit. So you need two of those. These are vented chest seals from Rhino Rescue. In here, in this nifty little mesh pocket, you got a roll of medical tape. Uh, I think that's a 10 yard roll of medical tape. And then we have three pair of nitrile gloves uh, because if it's bodily fluids that are not yours, you don't want them on your bare hands. So there's always uh, gloves in any of my kits. Then we'll move on to the other side. Here's a pair of trauma shears. Uh, I don't know who these are from. I've got a lot from North American Rescue, but I don't know what brand these are to speak of. A Sharpie. Sharpies are always good to mark. Uh, if you apply a tourniquet, mark the time that you apply the tourniquet on there. Then that way, the next step, uh, medical level that you take somebody to, they'll know what time that tourniquet was put on. We've got a uh, nasal pharyngeal airway. Go into your nose to keep an airway, an open airway. We've got two North American Rescue. Uh, these are compressed gauze. They are four and a half inches by 4.1 yards. They're six ply uh, compressed cotton gauze that you use for wound packing. Along with, if you don't have enough of your quick clot, you've got two of these that are left that you can use to pack wounds. And then after that, this is a North American Rescue. This is a four inch EDT flat. This is an emergency trauma dressing. It's vacuum packed to where it won't take up as near as much room as your regular four inch trauma dressings. But that's what I've got in here. We'll kind of all lay it out and uh, then you can look and see how much stuff you can actually fit in your IFAC. All right, guys, this is laid out. Everything in here fit in this IFAC and there was still a good amount of room. You could fit some more stuff. I did, did not put a needle decompression or a, a compression decompression needle in here. I don't have any right now. And honestly, I'm not trained on those. 
It's something I do need to get some training on, I'll be honest with you, and I need to order some of those. But to go over it real quick again, two cat tourniquets, uh, medical tape, nasal pharyngeal airway, two rhino chest seals, I think a combat gauze, three pairs of gloves, a Sharpie, a pair of trauma shears, two uh, four, inch, uh, four inch compressed gauze from North American Rescue, and then a uh, four inch trauma dressing from North American Rescue. Guys, I hope you like this video. All of that stuff will fit in here easily with room to spare. If you need anything, talk to Chuck, find him on YouTube, it's Homestead Medical. Uh, that's where I buy most of my medical stuff. But guys, I appreciate it and we'll see you on the next